Hello and welcome to News Click. We are going to discuss the ongoing trade wars which seem to have intensified with President Trump's latest, uh, shall we say, sanctions on China, which China is also responding to. This, of course, means destabilization of the global trade regime, which we have discussed earlier with others as well, but with Professor Bishwajit Dhar, who we have in the studio today. Bishwajit, we have discussed these issues a number of times. The threat it brings to the trading system as a whole, it doesn't seem that the momentum, which we thought might be just maneuvering, it has stopped. It seems now the entire trade with China is in danger of coming under various sanctions. Exactly. I think uh, President Trump has been mentioning this uh, uh, the 500 billion uh, amount for a past few months. So if you uh, see what uh, US imports from China is actually 507 billion. That's what the number was last year. So what he's actually talking about is targeting the entire import from China. And uh, that is what he's going. I think he's going in incrementally. You know, it was first uh, 50 billion, uh, which was uh, in August. Uh, and now it's 200 billion. And uh, so from, from the US side, it's 250 billion. And, and China has immediately retaliated with 60 billion. So it's, it's uh, 250 billion versus 110 billion that we're looking at now. You know, but the one thing that's interesting is we thought that it would have repercussions across the trading regime. And this would at least introduce problems for different economies, including the US economy. But the US economy seems to be doing better. The dollar has strengthened. And in fact, the problem is with the, uh, shall we say, the middle income group countries uh, like Brazil, like Turkey, like India, whose uh, uh, currencies are weakening at the moment. No, I think, I think uh, we have to you know, split this issue up into two parts. Uh, the part about uh, US economy um, sort of getting the you know, momentum right now, uh, I firmly believe it's actually past legacy. Um, You'll remember that uh, post 2008, you know, on so Obama, Bush started this, but Obama did a whole lot of palm priming. And, and many of the initiatives that he has taken were of sort of, you know, medium term kind. And invest, investing in technology and, you know, sort of uh, strengthening the, the production base. And he was doing it quite silently. Uh, so what I uh, saw, and actually I analyzed this, it was de facto industrial policy coming, but not in you know the name. But to say they were doing planning, something they, they were, were actually doing arguing, planning. Argued against. They're actually doing planning. They're actually doing planning. They're actually providing a whole lot of subsidy, something that they accuse the Chinese of. And, and the interesting part was that a lot of these subsidies were rooted through the defense sector, which comes outside the trade regime. Abs absolutely. So you know NASA was doing a lot of the you know the backstopping work and. Uh, so all this was happening in the U.S. and I think the the fruits of this this is going is now being you know reaped by by Trump. But let me also say that you know um, if this goes any further, uh, then um, the impact of tariffs is will clearly be on the prices of the the products that uh, U.S. imports from China, and uh, almost everything that the Americans consume in every sector is somewhere other, other linked to imports from China. So what are we looking at? We're looking at actually a sort of a general price rise, kind of an inflationary pressure. But if the exchange rate changes in favor of a stronger dollar, then this will not be seen by the American people. Nobody is going to come. Because, you know, still, till now we are, talk, we are talking about only $50 billion. Um, now once he's, he's extended it to uh, $200 billion, uh, you are actually covering, uh, bringing in a whole lot of products into this basket. 50% of all imports that 50, 50%, US does from China. That is right, 50% of all imports. Now, in, in when he had imposed tariffs on, on 50 billion uh, worth of imports, the tariff uh, was 25%. Yeah? So he, initially, he actually threatened a similar kind of tariffs, 25%. But I think he's been advised by, you know, whole lot of people not to go that way because th that would have immediately put that shock in the US economy. 
Now, once you, you, you subject the economy to this kind of a price shock, then you know you are going to get into uh, a vicious cycle. Let me be the devil's advocate here. Suppose there is a 10 percent tariff, which is what is imposed at the moment on this 200 billion, but the Chinese currency weakens by also 10 percent arguments. Right. Then there is no effect on the American consumer. Let me argue this way, Let, that it's difficult to uh, visualize a situation where the Chinese uh, currency will uh, depreciate by another 10 percent. Because you know, if you look at the past six months, there's already been a depreciation of about 9 or 10 percent. Yeah? And it's highly likely that in another five, six months, there's going to be another 10 percent depreciation. So now that is it's very, 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 very unlikely. So my sense is that this entire, you know, sort of 10 percent increase in tariffs will be passed on to the consumers in terms of higher prices. Now, once you have the higher prices, once you have the inflationary pressures, then you know the then you will have to then go in for in interest rate hike. You know, the, the good monetarists will actually do this. Yeah, and 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 then you know the vicious cycle will come in. Inflation and inflation cost and of money and, going up. And yeah, so and on. and the pressure on the U.S. dollar. Let, let me take it from another tack. That if we, for instance, or the other countries who are hit by sanctions, including China, and India is also on the list, as we all know, if that happens, then. Other argument is if the currency strengthens, the American sale of goods would get affected. But American sale today is largely in defense and there isn't much that the world can do on that. No, absolutely. There, is, uh, uh, there, there isn't much they can do and I think the other thing which is also happening is that the Americans are not getting their way in, in the defense deals. You, know, you, you see the desperation with India. Yeah, and uh, I think the, the, the reason why they, they want to impose all these sanctions against India is because they, you know, India is not go going and buying their equipment. They are, they, are, they are cutting all the aid to Pakistan, so they are losing a huge market out there. So I think in terms of their you know, sort of defense uh, uh, deals, the Americans are doing pretty poorly. The US is in a pretty bad way because uh, you know, in terms of uh, you know, manufacturing, they don't have anything. They can't offer except them. arms, bombs. Except arms, except arms, bombs and arms. They That's can right. Do. So, so if 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 uh, 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 President Trump, uh, you know, thinks that by imposing higher tariffs, he's going to make America, he's barking up the wrong tree, because you know, uh, industrialization is not a switch. That you know, you 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 switch it on, you know, switch off everyone else, and and the rust belt is going to start rolling. It doesn't happen like that. So, uh, you know, the rust belt uh, will start rolling only after a few years if he takes the right kind of policies. And, and he, ca he can't take the right kind of policies because his, his, his whole budgetary policy is, is uh, in com com completely perverse. Yeah. It's in support of the hyper rich. Absolutely. Who are essentially Absolutely. financial companies. Absolutely. And therefore they have no stake in any manufacturing Absolutely. whatsoever except defense. Absolutely. So, so you know. Uh, uh, the 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 problem that the U.S. Face, fa is facing today is because it was actually a consumption-led economy, hmm? and and this consumption binge has been fueled further by President Trump in the last last one year. So there is no way that the Americans are going to get the investment rates up, so that you know we're talking big about in, you know getting the infrastructure right. It doesn't have the money to do that. We've all seen how poor American infrastructure today Absolutely. is compared Absolutely. to the rest Absolutely. of the world. Absolutely. So he doesn't have the money. He doesn't have the funds to do that. Huh? The government is breaking completely. So he can't even go and borrow from anywhere. Yeah. So I think you know because of all these kinds of perverse policies that he has taken, and he has now taken a, that huge gamble on uh, on trade. And let me tell you, it's not just the, the Chinese that uh, who who would actually uh, you know hit hit against him. I was actually looking at uh, what this uh, uh, action on on steel and aluminum have done to uh, the global trading system. As uh, you know, um, this is uh, the first set of sanctions. The first set of sanctions that it took, and uh, I was just looking at the number of disputes that this has triggered in the WTO. There are 22 disputes, uh, 15 by the the trading partners who have been miffed because of you know the the steel and aluminum and others also because. Prior to steel and aluminium, there were 
a range of anti-dumping actions that he took against some countries. And uh, so there are 15 against US and the US has then retaliated in the WTO with seven more. Huh? So there are 22 disputes uh, there which you know has gone under the radar screen. So just imagine what is going to happen to the trading system because you know there are all the major countries including India you know are at war with the United States. So, so let's not uh, you know sort of uh, think that it's just the US-China war that is taking place. It's truly a, 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 you know a global trade war and the likes of which we haven't actually seen. You know, we only you know talked a bit about uh, the, uh, the 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 30s uh, trade war, the beggar thy neighbor policy, but in last very long. You know, the U.S. retracted very soon. But what Trump administration is doing today is opened up a whole Pandora's box in terms of trade disputes. So where this is going to go, you don't know. Because the other problem, let me just mention, since I'm on the WTO, that the the U.S. has cut the main arm of the WTO which is dispute settlement. At the end of this month, uh, you know, beginning October, uh, in the appellate body which is supposed to have seven members, there will be only three members left. Yeah? And for any pa appellate body, uh, the, the panel to adjudicate, you need a minimum of three. So all these disputes which are piling up and which would certainly go to appeal will have to be, you know, sort of adjudicated by these two poor three fellows uh, who wouldn't know what to do. So, so now it's a, it's a mindless kind of a situation that has happened uh, and uh, don't know where it, is, where it is going to end. Thank you very much, Bishins, for being with us. I think we could need to watch the way the trade wars, wars are developing. And it does appear that uh, Trump and his administration is having gained out of WTO, and they were the biggest gainers out of WTO, have now taken the position that let's consolidate our gains and we don't need the WTO anymore. Yeah. This is the only explanation yeah. Yeah. without saying it outright, without dismantling it physically, yeah. just hamstring it, yeah. do a whole lot of actions outside yeah. it, and then the consequences can be weathered yeah. by hamst making WTO ineffective. Yeah, that's in what we need to settlement. do, I think. I think, I, think we, I think we need to see how the WTO, you know, next, next, next month onwards, how, how WTO is able to, you know, uh, counter this kind of an assault. And this is very interesting because Bishujit and I and various others have been opposed to the WTO regime. Mm -hmm. And we are now in this extremely uh, odd position of having to say that dismantling WTO is not in our interest either. So we are <laughs> caught in this kind of, shall we say, <laughs> odd situation. Yeah. But then that's the reality of it, that once a system comes, it has certain uh, elements to it. What we don't want is no system, which is what the US is pushing the trading system to. Thank you very much, Bishud, for being with us. This is all the time we have for News Click. Do keep watching News Click on this and other issues.